You are listening to the postcast presented by the Locked On Senators podcast and the Glebe Central Pub. Make sure you check out the Glebe Central Pub right in the heart of the Glebe. Great food, awesome drinks, an atmosphere to match every Saturday in the month of February. Live music and oh yeah, the Send Shuttle go to and from the CTC for just $17 round trip. I'm Ross Levitan alongside Brandon Pillar, and we are breaking down a win. The Ottawa Senators four, the Tampa Bay Lightning two. Ottawa weathered the storm early. Tampa had the first six shots in this game, and then it was all Senators, really, for the most part beyond that. Pillsy joining us from Belleville, Ontario. Pillsy, how'd you see this one unfold? This was a great game for the Ottawa Senators, Ross. And one of my keys to victory was this team has to get off to a hot start. And they did that. Tim Stutzel was a big part of that. He scored an emphatic goal. That's a goal you want to see Timmy get. So hopefully he can start bringing more of those in. It kind of gets the snowball rolling here. And then my locked on player, Matty Joe, showing us that speed again. And Ross, I don't know. Maybe you can tell me, did they check the game notes on Vasilevsky low blocker or? Well, if anyone was going to know, it's the man who had a revenge game tonight. Matthew Joseph, former teammate, Stanley Cup champion with the Tampa Bay Lightning. His goal, man, was pretty unreal. The first one I'm talking, the second one was even better, it could be argued, based on the fact that the second one was all wheels and he just left everybody in the dust. But his first goal, I mean, he knew exactly where he was putting that low blocker. Oh, yeah. And it's no surprise or coincidence that that's where he went. For the second goal as well. So I thought it was a great game for Matthew Joseph. And Ross, when I was looking at uh, the lines today, I noticed the one thing we kind of were saying, ah, Joseph, Timmy, Giroux, not really doing it for us. And that's the only line, really. well, they didn't change the fourth line, but that's a line that they kept the same in the top nine. And they end up having arguably the best uh, the best night out of all three of those top not top nine lines. So you love to see that or top three lines. Sorry. Yeah, they had a fifty six percent shot share at even strength when they were on the ice tonight. They played the most at five on five, fifteen minutes and twenty three seconds. And Timmy Superstar was in his bag of tricks today. He was dancing. He was physically engaged. We'll get more into that because we've been very hard on the goaltending, and I think rightfully so. I think we've done our best to tiptoe around the issue for a long time. The stats are very apparent that when this team gets league average goaltending, they win games. Well, tonight they got way better than league average goaltending from Anton Forsberg. This game could have been two or three nothing before Ottawa even had a shot on goal. Those weren't just shots from perimeter. These weren't Ottawa shooting on Peter Mrazek the other night. These were high danger shots, and he made a few 10 bell saves. How about the glove save on Stamkos in the second? where he just snared it out of midair with the glove. He made a ton of 10-bell saves. So Anton Forsberg, brilliant tonight, a 923 save percentage. But we've put up the poll live on YouTube. Anton Forsberg has the fire helmet right now. So that makes for an interesting conversation. We'll get to the results when we get to our Send Central standouts presented by the Glebe Central Pub. Pilsy's got a little prop to show everybody but first I'll tell you who I put on here for the options we obviously put Matthew Joseph we put Tim Stutzla and then a couple unsung heroes Mark Kastelik I saw a ton of praise for him on social media and rightfully so the fourth line got a bit more ice time than they've had because they earned it and then I also put Artem Zub on there. I was driving back from work, listening to the pregame show right before puck drop, and Dean Brown, Gord Wilson, the view from the broadcast booth, were talking about how Artem Zub's still not 100%. It was a bit of a game-time decision into tonight's game. Four block shots, two, I know they're up two, but two monster block shots at the end of the game when it was ticking down. And that showed heart, that showed determination, and I think Artem Zub deserves a bit of a stick tap for his performance tonight. But this one, Billsy, I know I've kind of tiptoed around it at the start, but how were you feeling those first 10 minutes as Tampa was just pouring on the pressure? And we knew they would coming off a 9-2 to two loss at home. They might have to burn those jerseys because these are the first two times they yeah. wore those new jerseys. Uh, so now they've lost by a combined score math guy of 13-4. to four. <laughs> Yeah, not great for the new jersey debut, but... Uh... 
Yeah, it was concerning the start of the game, Ross. Like the Sens were scrambling in their own end. Forsberg had to make a couple really good saves and he was up to the task early and that allowed them to stay in the game and then they get the 2-0 lead. So that's what you want to see from the Sens up against a pissed off Tampa Bay Lightning team. Weather the storm and then strike back. That's what they did. So Tampa had the 7-1 shot advantage early on in this game. And then the first period ended with 10 shots for Ottawa and 7 for Tampa. They poured it on. And let I'll let you break this down because it was a ton of fun to see. I know people in the chat have already watched it 85 times. People who are listening to this in their car, if you missed the postcast live, you can always check it out the next day wherever you get your podcast. I mean, Tim Stutzel's goal, like that's going to be on every highlight reel going forehand toe drag and then a backhand toe drag and then sniping short side i mean that was just a thing of beauty yeah it was great and this play starts with sandy quick slides it over to timmy and timmy gets his wheels going he carries the puck up the ice gets around his man nice and easy and what i liked about this ross is my biggest kind of qualm with tim stutzler lately is he's forcing the pass making one too many passes etc like just sometimes Rip it and rip it, Timmy. And Timmy looks off. There was two open options, and they showed it on the broadcast on the second angle. There was two options for him to make a pass. Didn't even look at them. Didn't even consider. He said, I'm toe-dragging around this second defender, and I'm ripping this one home. So that's the confidence we need to see from Tim Stutzel because he has that talent, and he has the creativity. But it's almost like he's too smart for his own good. He almost has too much creativity. He just needs to simplify his game. And... Look, if you want to do a double toe drag to score a goal rather than do four extra passes to try to get a goal, I'm down with that. So I like that with Timmy. I thought you were going to say the play started with Sam as our guy Sam here is throwing a couple shekels in the guitar case. We appreciate that, Sam. We appreciate all our citizens here. Locked on Senators postcast your team every day. We take that extremely seriously here on the pod. If anyone has any questions too, we always highlight the super chats and we'll get to those at the end of the postcast. But not only was that a beautiful play to start the scoring, it also brought Tim Stutzlet to 50 points on the season. He joins Martin Havlat as the only Ottawa Senators under the age of 23 to have three 50-point seasons. So some stick taps are in order nice. for the young superstar. We forget, I think, how young he is sometimes. Just turned 22 a month ago. So great game overall, but great goal for Tim Stutzla tonight. Jake Sanderson, Artem Zook get the assists on that one. And then three minutes later, Matthew Joseph gets a two on one and this, I mean, great initial feed by Tim Stutzla, another toe drag in his own blue line to create the space and the lane. He gets it up and uncle G just wants to get everybody else involved on family day. Yeah, exactly. So uncle G carries it up and uh, it's a two on one. And what I liked about this Ross is Giroux doesn't wait too long. Sometimes with the two on one, you're tempted to be like, okay, Let's get in closer, and then I'll wait for the defender to drop, and then I'll send it over. But Drew, right away, as soon as he enters the zone, he sees Matthew Joseph has a step, and he's like, I know the speed this guy has. I'm not going to waste any time and narrow down the amount of real estate we have. Matty Joe's got all this wide open space. Get it to him right away. He speeds down the wing like he does uh, in the offensive zone, and clearly he he knows something about Vasilevsky, the low blocker. He doesn't hesitate to fire it in and uh, that gets things going for his night first of two goals and it's two nothing Ottawa at that point I could I was that, that was like a pinch me moment Ross I was like there's no way the <laughs> Ottawa Senators are up two nothing right now but uh, it's real it was real it was beautiful Sense take a two nothing lead into the locker room and then the beginning of what turned out to be a pretty physical game Jacob Bernard Docker just at his own blue line catches Brandon Hagel a little low. I will say it was a little low. Now, no penalty was called. No penalty was called at all on the Senators in this game. I thought they were going to for sure get one after Ottawa got the only power play of the game. Middle of the third period, you think a little Tim Peel game management might be on deck. But instead, Ottawa gets a clean sheet. That's a 
What do they do in, in minor hockey? You get like a card at the gift shop or something. Everybody gets a team nacho or something at the uh, at the restaurant. If, if you don't take a penalty, that's an old school tournament thing in minor hockey. But well, hey, Ross, I don't know. I hate to be the well actually guy, but Jacob Bernard Docker did get a five minute uh, penalty and Tim Stutzla also got an interference penalty. So they did have two penalties called nope. against them. I know people are going to say that in the chat. I like that, but no power plays. There you go. No power plays. Keeping you honest. But a couple power fists because Jacob Ooh. Bernard Docker got into his second career fight later that shift. And you know what? Credit all around. Credit to Mikey Asimont for stepping up for his teammate. Credit for JBD for accepting the invitation. I thought it was a good tussle, a little back and forth. Yeah, I thought it was a great fight. Uh, they each landed a couple blows. They each looked like they were pissed off and, and kind of standing up for themselves or for um, – Isimont, he was sticking up for his teammate Hagel, like you mentioned, and JBD, he's like, all right, I, I respect that. We'll throw down. And I thought it was pretty much a fair fight, but uh, JBD gets the takedown at the end. So I think he, the scorer's card got to give him one extra push there. So JBD with the win, the UFC title belt for now in Tampa. The TKO, you could give it to him there. Um, my next note is just the Stutzla Joseph. Giroux line is dancing. Then there was a good opportunity for Shane Pinto out in front. Credit to Vasilevsky, made a good save. And then this to me is where Anton Forsberg was at his best. Middle of the second period, huge blocker save through traffic. And I could tell he was locked in the way that the puck just directed so calmly into the corner. And then a minute later, the one I mentioned where it was point blank on Steven Stamkos. Stamkos walked in at all the time, all the space. He's done that hundreds of times in that arena and put the puck in the net, but not tonight, not on Anton Forsberg. And that, to me, is what really, I don't want to say it carried momentum, but it certainly added some for Ottawa. They ultimately get a three-on-one rush about a minute later, and I don't want to talk about this, so you can, but when you're a shooter and you're known for scoring goals, you have to grip it and rip it. I think that very much made clear that Josh Norris is playing with minimal confidence right now. Yeah, something's up with Norris there because, I, Ross, I was hoping he was going to do what Tim Stutzler did and just looked off those passers. Like, oh, I see you guys there, but I'm good. I got this. And instead, a three-on-one, he slows everything down and then pivots his body fully away from the net. Like, you can't, you can't be more obvious that you got the yips to shoot it when you're – a 30 plus goal scorer than on a three on one, turning your body away from the net like that. Like, especially when he's on his one timer like side, like he had a stick pointing to the middle perfectly. Like he was in the perfect spot to shoot that. And he did everything he could to first not shoot it. And second, wait way too long for any opportunity to be available. And then turns it over. Like, come on, not ideal, but you know what was, his goal seconds later. And it started as an individual effort against Steven Stamkos in his own zone. Wait, you're talking about Norris? No, I'm saying a few minutes later, Matthew Joseph in okay. his own zone. Just stripped Steven Stamkos and away he went. Yeah, I mean, that speed that when Matthew Joseph decides to turn the burners on, whew, he is so, so fast. And did you catch it? Maybe the chat can help us out too. Who did he burn to the neck? Because that guy thought he had an angle. Uh, I know he that burned was... Chernak right away. So probably his D partner was the other guy on the other wasn't side. Wasn't Hedman. Wasn't Hedman though. Yeah, I don't know. But I know uh -huh. he, he got past Chernak pretty easily there, gets himself a breakaway. And then this is what this is what I like to see, Ross. If you have a simple play, you know Joseph. He's going to rip it low block blocker. He doesn't hesitate. He doesn't. And he beats Fassi again. So, yeah, loved, loved tonight's game by Matthew Joseph. And uh, spoiler alert, might be mentioning him later on. In Maybe. It was Emil Lilleberg who couldn't uh, catch up there. Your guy. Uh, my guy. Before the end of the period, though, my other guy, and I knew this was going to happen when I disrespected Mitchell Chafee by not knowing his first name when we did the thing. Knew I knew I, happen. I disrespected him. And But before we get to his goal, because this happened before the goal, was his little altercation with Tim Stutzla. And when it happened, I, I, had, I had a tweet that I needed to get off my chest because we saw he was dancing. But I love when Tim Stutzla's physically engaged in the game. I love when he's getting into it. It started with a strong forecheck on Darren Radish where he separated the puck, 
fans wanted a penalty. It was such a hard hit. And then on the way out, that was Timmy that engaged that. And I loved it all around because I thought it was good on Chafee to say, I'm not dealing with this. Maybe you don't love the extra shot when he's down, but that was a WWE type TKO itself where he said, I'm going down, but you're coming with me. Yeah, I like that from Timmy. That like for the amount of crap he gets for falling on the ice and stuff, this time he's like, no, nah, I'm yeah, I'm taking you down with me. Like this is this is garbage. And uh he was pissed off there. So you love to see that from Timmy. Oh, it was just great all around. As you mentioned, each guy just got uh, two minutes roughing and you keep on playing after that. Then he scored a goal. To me, this is a bit of a gift from Jacob Chikrin. Some would call it a bad bounce. I'm yeah. I'm happy to hear either argument, but just a deflected puck rimmed around the boards. And it's almost like you see that usually when it hits a stanchion, not when it hits a defenseman stick where it just pops out in the slot. Yeah, I mean, that was a gift-wrapped puck for your guy Mitchell Chafee there, and he makes no mistake, and he oh buries God. it. So, I better get a jersey. Yeah, yeah, you got a bunch of guys on this Lightning team, apparently. <laughs> um, but, look, I know the optics of that are tough for Chikrin, especially when a certain Sens podcast tweets out that Chik- Chikrin has the most giveaways in the league, and then it's that happens. Close. It's not great, um, but I don't put too much blame on there. He's just trying to stop the wraparound. It's, it's a bad bounce that ends up in the perfect spot for that lightning player all around. It's, it's a lucky goal for the lightning. I'm not really, I'm, I'm not playing the blame game on this one. Uh, no giveaway was credited on that play for what oh, it's worth. Maybe good. because he didn't have possession, but I just went to check because Ottawa was only credited with two giveaways in this wow. entire game. Eight for the Tampa Bay lightning, including two from Vasilevsky, which is kind of a strange one. Giveaway takeaways. They're fun to look at, but they're not always the most meaningful statistic i i will say that one um so after the second period ottawa had the lead and they never let it go ottawa gets a fourth goal from tarasenko perfect uh shot off the pad from brady kachuk and when you're tarasenko like there's nothing better than that my only note other than the goal was perfect that's all that's all i said perfect. what wasn't perfect is that 34 seconds later though pilsy they gave it right back give me your thoughts on that that two goal sequence yeah i want to talk about that first goal first and foremost ross because that's one of my favorite plays in hockey. And more often than not, on a two-on-one, if <laughs> that's probably a super annoying by me, but if you're watching the game with me, I'll yell out, low shot, low shot. Like, I want that low shot every time. Because first, it, it's a shot on net. Like, nothing wrong with just getting a nice shot on net. Second, it, if you play it right, and if your teammate, so in this situation, Tarasenko is ready for it, honestly, that's better than a pass that you could hit them on the tape. Because... The goalie is now out of position and has to make that save. The defenseman is looking at the puck, watching the rebound. So you're almost wide open at that point. And Tarasenko taps it in because sometimes the players try to force that pass too much when just take your take your chance with the low shot. At, at the very least, you create a rebound and can create chaos off that rather than just turning it over with the forced pass across the slot there. So first off, love the low, low pass pad shot rebound goal by Brady Tarasenko combo and then Ross this is one of the things you hate the most speaking of things I love the most things you hate the most a goal being scored while a goal is being announced for your team you don't want to do that uh yeah palm face pass off the pads pills love that um yeah 35 seconds later and this had to be the worst line out there tonight right Batherson, Norris and Greg and just before I get to this goal that's another comment I wanted to make on the line changes is I looked at that and I was like that's Jacques Martin being like I'm not letting you you guys and Josh Norris and Drake Batherson ride off Brady's coattails anymore I'm putting Brady with people that are going to produce because he he deserves it and I'm putting Ridley Greg on your line so you can see what it's like when a guy actually puts effort in, plays a physical four check and is working hard, maybe he can spark a boost out of you guys, but that didn't happen. Where I'm going with this is Batherson tries a cute little backhanded pass off the boards that I, the success rate on that is so low. Even if it happens, it's not that great of a play. It doesn't happen. He turns it over and um, Hagel gets it, sends it out front and Braden points right there. He's going to score more often than not when he's in that position. So Bit of comedy of errors, too, by Chikrin, like, fell on, on top of uh, whoever was in the middle there. I know Batherson lost his battle at the boards, but 
Yeah, I, I'm putting that one more on Bathus in there. You can't yeah, be definitely. doing those cute plays like that when you're in your own end up against when uh, t- like good guys are on the ice like Hagel and Point there. So I didn't I didn't love that from uh, Batheson and him and Norris. They better they better start turning things around here. Yeah, Will Scott says he doesn't blame Norris at all. Batherson looked awful tonight. Same with Chikrin. That's from Will Scott. Okay. Appreciate the coins. Will sure. appreciate your opinion, and we'll have more of ours on the other side, but just to wrap up the game summary real quick. I mean, there's a huge Forsberg save on a two on one against Chaffee as well. I want to talk briefly about this two on one defense by Tampa. I have to give stick taps to it. Joseph coming in, looking for the hat trick. Did you notice that Victor Hedman gave the old, the old push to Sorelli on the back check? Oh, no, Hedman, I didn't catch that. Hedman knew he was too far, so he gave the old, um, what do you call it, shot out of a cannon type thing where yeah. you get some momentum. So that's just a savvy play from Victor Hedman. But good on Ottawa. They didn't only keep Victor Hedman off the score sheet tonight, but they kept Nikita Kucherov off the score sheet, and Nikita Dude. Kucherov was dash two in Ooh. this game. That doesn't happen very often. A part of that, though, was discipline. Ottawa did not give up any power plays. Did I do that right there, there you go. Uh, well in the win? And another fun stat. We talk about that two-on-one goal where Brady passed it off the pad, the old P.O.P. How about Shane Pinto? Beautifully timed off the glass, onto the tape. Shane Pinto gets an assist, and now the Ottawa Senators are 36-5-5 five and five when Shane Pinto gets a point. So like, good. how... Like, are they going to get to 55 and five? That would be a nice round number. That's what we're going to cheer for here. Locked on senders on the other side. We will get to our send central standouts presented by the Glebe central pub. The postcast is always brought to you by the Glebe central pub. You can visit the Glebe central pub right in the heart of the Glebe for great food, awesome drinks, and the atmosphere to match at 779 bank street, right in the heart of the Glebe. You can also follow them on social media, head to Glebe central pub. On Instagram, they're always posting what's going on at the Glebe Central Pub, all their live music, all of their great events, like their beer of the day. Tomorrow, Tuesday, how about some Creamore? I love a good Creamore. You can go get that at the Glebe Central Pub. They also have available to you the Sens Shuttle, $17 round trip to and from the CTC for just $17. Sue gets you there. She gets you back. It's so easy, so fun, and you can ride the Sens Central Shuttle Presented by the Glebe Central Pub on t- uh, next Thursday. Thursday is the next one. Dallas, Thursday, 7 p.m. game. They also have one next Saturday against Vegas. So go ahead there today. Glebe Central Pub. The vibes are free at the GCP at 779 Bank Street, right in the heart of the Glebe. I wish there was a Glebe Central Pub in Belleville. That would have been a great treat to my night. But this episode is also brought to you by our friends over at Sleeper. Guys, Sleeper is the daily fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network. And if you want to win 100 times your money, play daily fantasy hockey on the Sleeper app. With Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash. You heard that right in daily fantasy hockey contests. What I love about Sleeper is their app's got a group chat. So just like the chat is buzzing in the postcast, you and your buddies can get going, talk some smack, let them know you got a big week coming up, and entries can be made in less than a minute. Time is money, so you can make those entries real quick right before puck drop. Choose stats like goals, assists, saves, plus, minus, and more. You heard me, Sense fans. 100 times payouts on Sleeper. So start paying attention and get your picks right so you could win big. Use promo code locked on NHL and you'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's locked on NHL. See sleepers terms, terms of use for details only available for our friends in the States for now. Welcome back to the postcast. I'm Ross Levitan. That's Brandon Pillar. You can follow the show on social media at send central. We're getting great insight from Tampa. We're Whoa. at Patty Lev. Ooh. Hi mom. Mentioned that in real time and in slow motion, they showed the push from behind from Hedman on that two-on-one play. So it is a great play, and and it did ultimately disrupt the two-on-one chance. Now let's get to our Send Central standouts presented by the Glebe Central Pub. The Senators get a 4-2 win. Pilsy, would you like me to dance while you get dressed up as we do a little costume party here finally for your Send Central standouts? Ross, I've been waiting for this moment for so long, and I thought... A win the day it happens. The a win the day it happens. I was hand delivered by Lilims Martian a gift, a gift from our good friends 
at Ottawa Fire. First time putting it on here. Let's go. It's the fire helmet. We got Sense Central standouts. I'm so fired up for this. Finally, I get to join in, and these feel great. I could I could run into a burning building right now, and nothing's, nothing's stopping me. These are not props. These are the real deal. And I can see why you guys get tired with these on your head after a while. These They got some weight to them. Uh, my vibe is a little, a little dirty here. Martian must have been fighting some fires without me. But since I have the helmet on, there Ross has his too. Can I have my first Sen Central standout, Ross? Are you you're going you're going masked down? Huh? You're you're going with the I I don't put this down. I keep it up. Anyways, teach their own. Oh, I, I'm trying to be safe. Safety first. Safety first. Um, lead us off, Billsy. Who's your Sen Central standout presented by the Gleep Central Pub? My Sun Central standout presented by the Gleep Central Pub is Matthew Joseph, my locked on player up against his old team, the Tampa Bay Lightning. Revenge is a dish best served cold on the ice. Two goals for Matthew Joseph. He almost had that empty netter. Yep, like Ridley's empty netter is saying it was very close there. Maybe he could have done the Ridley Greg clapper into for the emphatic finish. Um, but this is the kind of game we needed from Matthew Joseph, right? Like he needed to show his speed. He needed to show Jacques Martin. Hey, I like being in the top six. I like playing with Tim Stutzla and Claude Giroux. Don't change this line. Don't do it. And he keeps it together and they're able to have a big night. Matthew Joseph with two goals, both of them absolute beauties. That's got to feel good if you're Joseph after that uh, trade, especially with Nick, Nick Paul not really doing a whole lot in this game. Uh, Matty Joseph probably feels good about that. So that is my first Sen Central standout presented by the Gleep Central Pub. And you'll be shocked to know that Matthew Joseph is dominating the poll of who should get the fire helmet tonight. He's going to win it. 89% say that Anton Forsberg should give it to... Matthew Joseph, 6% say Tim Stutzla, 3% Artem Zub, and 1%. Shout out to whoever voted for Mark Kastelik. His, uh, I'm sure he'll send you a signed jersey or something. But all jokes aside, it, it was great to see Mark Kastelik get a bit more ice time tonight. Our Matt, our good friend Matty Perth sends, says that uh, tonight was only the fifth time in the last 15 games that he played over eight minutes. Like It's a pretty low bar to set. <laughs> But uh, good on Mark Kostelik to play a little bit more tonight. He, however, is not my first end central standout. There's two places I can go to this. But as a goalie-friendly man at heart, I have to go with Anton Forsberg. For the same reasons we discussed earlier in this game, I don't really need to go over step-by-step step as I already have. But that save on Stamkos really put the, the finishing touches on what was going to be probably a standout performance otherwise. But he was awesome, man. And not only that, but early on in the game. Those are my two reasons why, but a great sign to see Anton Forsberg playing at his best because when he's good, he's out at the top of his circle. His hands are very active. He makes good blocker saves like he was tonight where he, he was deflecting it into the corner. Just overall, loved what I saw from Anton Forsberg, and I don't care who has better stats in their career. Actually, second half of back-to-back, -back, though. I'm starting Forsberg tomorrow. I don't even care. Oh. <laughs> I'm starting Forsberg tomorrow. All right. I don't know. You know how I feel usually about the back-to-backs. but He's played point... one game in the last week. He's not gassed. He's barely played in the last month. He's playing tomorrow for me. That it, Even as much just to set a sign to Corpus Allo that that net is up for grabs, and if you play well, it's yours. That's going to yeah. be fun to see, though, tomorrow. I'm really curious who gets to start. I'm going with Forzy. Let us know in the comments. Who are you going with? I'm actually going to put up a poll. I think it's safe to say, Pilsy, the fire helmet poll is uh, pretty pretty unanimous. I want, Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if Jacques Martin will go to the back-to-back. The -back. Like, when's the last time the Sens went back-to-back -back with their goalies? I, I can't. I can't think of a more recent uh, a recent time. Maybe the the chat can let us know, but honestly, at this point, that's that's fine by me. Like Corpus Allo, the last two games was simply not good enough. Not that it's all his fault, but not good enough. And Forsy has been good in his last two games, so I don't hate that. And it's not like it's a long travel day. You're going from Tampa to Miami, essentially. So, and it's in the sunshine. It's going to be all right. I don't mind that at all, Ross. And I thought Forsy did a really good job down low. 
I thought his play down low was really good today. Even the rebounds, he was able to recover and get into good position so that he didn't have to scramble and make an athletic play like Eunice Corpsalo might have to do when he has a rebound shot he's got to deal with. So I like that pick, Ross, Anton Forsberg. Uh, do you want to go snake style or you want to snap, snap it back? I'll snap it back to you. I think I know which way you're going to go, but I'll snap it back over to you. Okay, good teammate. Plus one right there. Uh, I'm going to dish it. I'm going to, I scored on my first Sen Central standout. Now you give it, give it to me. I'll, I'll have an assist, a goal and an assist. I'll snap it back to you. Just like Dim Stutz, a beautiful first goal. And then, like you mentioned, he does a good job, just a nice outlet pass to get Claude Giroux sprung on a two-on-one with Matthew Joseph, which eventually leads to the second goal. So Timmy starts off the night hot. That's what you want to see from Tim Stutzla, especially when Josh Norris is struggling. You want your other kind of top centerman to be able to elevate his game, and that's what Stutzla did tonight. So I'm I'm loving Tim Stutzla and Matthew Joseph. It's weird, Ross, for us to have a night where those two guys are standouts and Claude Giroux isn't. Like, that's a very rare uh, occurrence here. So we love to see it from the younger guys here. Claude can't do it all the time. No, he can't, but I still thought he had a great game tonight. I think he was solid. No, he, Plus two, played yeah, over 20 minutes. Game. Yeah, a rare awful night in the dot for Claude though. Twelve percent in the dot. How many did he take? Jeez, twelve percent in the dot. G one for eight. Ooh, one for eight. How about Timmy? Eight for twelve. There we go. You know what, Ross? I would also like to add to my Sun Central standout of Timmy. How about going eight for twelve in the dot? I love it. Um, I might do something that's a little bit cheap. A little bit cheap. Can I just give it to the decor tonight? Because I loved I love what it. I saw from them. I loved what love I saw it. from JBD. We just had a great uh, negative capabilities, bringing some positivity here, saying a dark horse for the helmet is JBD with the fight and a few big blocks. I think that overall that decor tonight, the ice time allocation was perfect. Jacob Chikrin played the most out of any sense defenseman tonight, 22 minutes and 23 seconds. That's so perfect. Eric Branster sure. played 15-15. Everybody else right in that sweet spot, right in the middle. JBD played 17:38, but again, he was off in the box for over five minutes with the fight or five minutes until the next stoppage. And then just overall, like I thought Sanderson had a strong game defending the rush and putting the puck where it needed to be on the breakout. And I already talked about Artem Zub. Look, Ottawa as a team, and this is my other reason for the Sen Central standout being shared by all defensemen. I'm going to get the breakdown of it, but the Ottawa Senators blocked 26 shots in this game. 26 block shots as a team. They only gave up 27 shots. So they they were working overtime to get that. JBD had five block shots. Zub and Chikrin each had four. Um like even just that in particular is, is a reason why I think these guys deserve a ton of credit for what they brought to the table. So shout out to the back end. And uh, I don't think that Forsberg is going to go that way, but we know the goalies and the defensemen like to keep it away from the forward sometimes. <laughs> yeah. You guys get all the glory already. Let's keep uh, the helmet between the goalies and the defenders there. But I like that Ross. It's a good move. Great, uh, great teammate guy there spreading it around. And yeah, I really thought JBD had a had a good game. That's what you want to see from him after um wait, no, was he the odd man out last game or was it Branny? No, it was JBD. Yeah, so that's what you want to see from him coming back into the game. And I I think he makes a pretty good case that he deserves to be there over Travis Hamnick when everybody's healthy. I'm very curious to see what's next for the Ottawa Senators. I'll tell you it's gonna be a tough test. Going up against the Florida Panthers, but um, but hey, at least they're going in with a bit of momentum. This was a tough test tonight against a Tampa team that was mad about how they lost to Florida, and uh, now it's what can you do for me tomorrow? We'll have an episode for you bright and early on uh, Tuesday. We're recording at 9 a.m. Eastern, so we'll get that to you as soon as we can. And I want some final thoughts for you, Pills. It's a busy day for me. Work the old 10 to 6 at my uh, my day job. Come back, sends game 6 to 9. We vibe in the postcast. And now I'm I'm going to try to do my best Tim Stutzel impression. Men's league in 40 minutes, and it's a 20-minute drive. So I'm buzzing, feeling good. Sends get the win, 4 to 2. They don't even give up a single power play in this game. Oh, somebody they added a shot to Ottawa. So I think I said 27. Make it 28 shots on goal for Ottawa in this game. Just a, a great overall team effort. And this, hope you hope it's something that the team can build on as well. 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, especially after two stinkers and you come in and get a big win on the road. You love to see that. Hopefully carry that momentum into tomorrow's game. We'll get into it more on tomorrow's episode, Ross, but uh, Marsha and I had boots on the ground in Belleville for my final thoughts. We got to see those jerseys unveiled. They look gorgeous on the ice. Uh, they got to wear it more than just Belly's birthday, if you ask me. I think they, they were sharp jerseys. Unfortunately, look good, play good. Didn't exactly happen in this one. And uh, Hendrix Lapierre basically manhandled the Belleville Senators and got that win on his own. But we'll, we'll break it down more in tomorrow's episode. Still nobody answering. I asked on Twitter at Sen Central. I said, when's the last time the Sen started the same goalie on both halves of a back-to-back situation? Andrew wrote in saying maybe Mike Condon back in 2017. He started 26 yes. straight games. Definitely. But I'm wondering if it's been since then. I mean, Matt Murray could barely start two games in a row whenever gap there was in between, let alone two games back-to-back. So I'm curious, and I, I'm going to get the answer for that. Mm. I don't actually know how to do it that quickly. I think I'd have it would to go to every single back checking. to back. Yeah. Yeah. I'd have to be. Hopefully, the citizens can come through for us as well. And uh, yeah. Where, Sen- where's Sen- our guy, Daniel. Mark, who did all the postcast stats? That's a job for Mark. Whoa, Pilsy. That's not not only that, but Mark uh, Mark's postcast stats, which we appreciate so much. He, uh, yep. He actually, I just, I just went to uh, Instagram. He updated it and he noted exactly what I was about to shout out. Mark Kamad. He's on it. He's in it. Let's go. Yes, you and I postcasting when that. it's you and me. We're above 500 now. Mm. Let's Stanley go. Cup. <laughs> I was complimenting my hair after I took this off last time. Not today. Not today, folks. That's okay. Great postcast, Bilzy. Uh, I know you gave your final thoughts on Belleville. You gave your Send Central standouts. We got a whole lot more coming tomorrow. Let's get yep. some Go Sends Go in the chat. Go Sends Goes in the chats. I'm so fired up for all of the wins that are coming up. Because Pilsy's got his helmet now. Could you imagine if it's the Pilsy helmet run? The Sends <laughs> just go 30-0 and 0 for the rest of the season? Hey, well, like our friend Sam Dano said, win 10-game win streak starts tonight. Let's go. Oh, let's go. Let's live in this uh, delusional state for another 24 hours. The vibes are high. It's another vibe cast here on the Locked On Senators postcast. We vent or vibe after every single Ottawa Senators game. Make sure to like and subscribe wherever you get your podcast. Leave a comment. Watch multiple videos. All the things that help the algorithm. We appreciate wholeheartedly as we continue to do our best to be best in class. For Brandon Piller, I'm Ross Levitan. Shout out to all the citizens who join us, but if you miss it, you can check out Locked On Senators wherever you get your podcasts. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day now. Let's play some Danger Flutes.